Hey, my name is Mike. Uh, this is our project, Finding Dory, with uh, Dawson Cobbler and me, Mike Goff. Um, so, Finding Dory is a sequel to the film Finding Nemo. The opening scene of the film begins by showing the friendly group of clownfish, Marlin, and his son, Nemo, uh, who live with their friends, Dory. All these fish seem happy and peaceful in the environment, but something is missing for Dory. Dory suffers from memory loss and has dealt with the issue of her entire life. But the film shows that Dory has a minor flashback to her childhood and life with her parents. Upon remembering these memories, she feels the need to find her parents immediately. Finding Dory is an exciting, family-friendly film featuring Dory, an energetic, caring, and forgetful fish that embarks on several adventures through unknown territory in search of her family. The plot of Finding Dory displays an energizer, an empathizer, and an effective communicator of the fish world. With the intention of finding her parents, Dory set out the various adventures in every family and or friend group. Various types of roles exist in the particular fish group. Dory is the energizer of her friend group. According to Alder in Understanding Human Communications, an energizer pods a group of action from 2017. Dory is the energizer that prods her group to take action, such as going to find her parents. Marlin, the clownfish, one of Dory's closest friends, is one that often gets frustrated with Dory's energizing habits. He simply desires a peaceful life in a reef, but a life of Dory usually brings about unpredictability. As Marlin tries to avoid the conflict or resolve current issues, he often uses negative uh, escalatory messages. He yells, gets frustrated, and creates his own plan. When Dory initiates an idea or plan, Marlin usually responds negatively immediately. For example, during the film, Marlin uh, intentionally did not want to embark on the adventure to find Dory's parents because of the danger involved, but Dory and Nemo convinced him to agree because of the importance of the endeavor. These angry reactions from Marlin usually lead to Dory responding by running off on her own. When Dory is on her more trouble grows because she does not refrain from being an, the energizer. She has bold plans that she wants to accomplish and her plans usually work out in the end anyways, but with some obstacles along the way. So, to sum up that, uh, Dory is an energizer of the group because she initiates the adventure. And then she promotes talking uh, throughout the group with Marlin and Nemo. And then she also keeps the group going. So, on the adventures and, you know, uh, reef life. Initially, when the other animals meet Dory, they become frustrated with her responses to various situations. The reason for this frustration is that Dory repeats herself several times in the span of the conversation due to her short-term memory loss. For example, during the film, Dory meets an octopus referred to in the movie as Septus, but this is trying to, uh, that is trying to escape the aquarium. Since the octopus was trying to escape, he was in quite a hurry, but Dory simply kept repeating, Wow, it's destiny, over and over again. She was repeating this phrase because she believes that their meeting was fate. As the octopus became more frustrated, he yelled, What is this with you and your running my plans? Hank, flustered the octopus, believes that Dory is simply being distracting. He does not understand her memory loss struggles. Dory's personality and communication skills shine through these tense and often difficult situations. Regardless, most of successful business owners will agree that just being honest and disclosing as much information as you can will help one in a conversation. Dory is a positive example of this honest and disclosing type of character. As the plot develops, Hank later appreciates the honesty and the friendship that Dory delivers. She provides transparency to Hank as she confronts him about his plan to escape the aquarium with his intentions of being alone. According to uh, Krasenthik, uh in Empathy, why it matters and how to get it, Empathy, not apathy, or self-centeredness, is the heart of who we are. Dory displays his empathetic heart as she suggests to Hank that, her, that he join her in the clownfish to be a member of their family. Dory repeatedly shows that she is loving and caring, and she always puts others before herself, and willing to be friends with anyone and everyone. So to sum that up, Dory is an empathizer with Hank and the beluga whale, Bailey, in the movie, and empathizes with the fact that he can't use his echo uh, location.
So she's she sympathizes with everyone's problems. And she also empathizes with the issues that her friends had, like Hank and Bailey, and the struggles that they deal with. And Dawson. As Dory continues the mission of finding her parents, she meets a beluga whale. Am I the wrong spot? Oh. Lacking in confidence. Beluga whales lack vocal cords, but similar to many other animals, they have another special skill echolocation. These whales use nasal sacs near their blowholes to produce sound waves. These sound waves bounce off of other animals and objects, enabling these whales to use echolocation to locate food, swim safely, and survey their environment for danger. In this film, the, this particular whale has convinced himself that his sonar location does not work, possibly a hypochondriac. Dory effectively communicates with Bailey the beluga whale rather than judge him, control him, or ignore him. Dory calmly accepts his feelings and softly prompts him to try to use that location. In her approach to Bailey's problem, Dory proves herself to be an effective communicator, communicator, thus helping him overcome this hurdle in life. Dory is an energizer, an empathizer, and an effective communicator. In every adventure that Dory stumbles upon, she finds a way to change the lives of those around her. She initiates new challenges with Marlin and Nemo. She empathizes with issues that her friends Hank and Bailey are struggling with and she effectively communicates her needs to almost everyone that she comes in contact with throughout her days. Dory effectively sums up her outlook on life in saying, what is so great about plans? I never had a plan. Did I plan to lose my parents? No. Did I plan to find Marlon? No. Did you and I plan to meet? Well, I don't think we did. And that's because the best things happen by chance, because that's life. And that's you being with me out in the ocean, not safe in some stupid glass box. People need each other and people need friends like Dory. Uh, so to sum up that, sum, summarize that, um, Dory is an effective communicator because Dory is honest, loyal, and positive. And being honest and disclosing as much information as you will can help one in conversations. And then we have a video. For Dory is an effective the institute. They get transferred to permanent digs, an aquarium in Cleveland. Fish in here, go back in the ocean. Cleveland fish, stay there forever. <gasps> Cleveland? No, I can't go to the Cleveland. I have to get to control of Morro Bay, California and find my family. That's this place, the Marine Life Institute, the jewel of Morro Bay, California. You're here. You mean I'm from here? My parents are here. I have to get to them. So what exhibit are you from? Wait, I'm from an exhibit? Which one? I have to get there. Oh, that's a hard one, kid. Unless... Nah, never work. It's too crazy. What do you mean? Just tell me. I'm okay with crazy. You know, I could see that. Well, there's one thing I can think of to help you get to your family. If I just take... Yeah, that's a great idea. You take me to find them. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, no, no, no. If I just take your tag, I can take your place on the transport truck. Then you can go back inside and find your family. All you have to do is give me a tag. Oh, yeah, tag. There's a tag on my fin. How, how could you forget your tag on your fin? Oh, no. I'm sorry. I I suffer from short-term memory loss. You don't remember what we were talking about? Mm-mm. Not a clue. What were we talking about? Um, you were about to give me your tag. Well, I kind of like my tag. What, why do you want it? So I can go to Cleveland. Cleveland? I hear good things about Cleveland. Why do you want to go? Because if I stay here, I'm going to get released back to the ocean. And I have extremely unpleasant memories of that place. I just want to live in a glass box alone. That's all I want. Give me your tag! Hey, man, where's my tag? Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to go back to the ocean. 